One of the things that's completely new uh, with Fallout 4, and that I'm having a lot of fun with, is settlement management. And it can be a bit hard to understand that the game doesn't hold your hand and tell you everything you need to do. To some extent, it tells you what you need to do to create a flourishing settlement, but uh, certainly you have to go by some trial and error. And uh, I thought that just to make things a bit easier, I'd just show you how to set up a settlement from basic. So no, basically having nothing in the settlement. So I don't have food, I don't have water, I don't have power. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some furniture. I'm going to put down some beds. And these beds need to be in a building with a roof. So that building isn't big enough for me to be able to place any beds there. Now another thing that I need to create a new building. Now another thing that's very important with the settlements is that unless you have a provision line set up, the settlements are going to have a local store of supplies. So you need supplies to build certain amounts or to build you need a certain amount of supplies to build buildings, power generators, everything you need. And a very easy way of ensuring that you always have a healthy supply uh, of things available is to create supply lines between your settlements. Now mine aren't completely perfectly set up here but at least I have supplies to most of the settlements that I want supplies in which means I can use supplies from every settlement in every single other settlement. That's very useful because if not I would have to go back and forth with supplies and the way you set this up is first of all your charisma needs to be high enough that you're able to get the perk called, let's see here, yeah, the perk called local leader. So, with local leader, rank 1, I need 6 charisma. Then I can send a settler to establish a supply line. Uh, with rank 2, I can build stores and workstations, that requires Charisma 6 and a level of 14, so the requirements aren't that high, but it's very useful. So the way I set up these supply lines is that I go into the... Uh, I go into the... Um, menu, hold V. If I press Q, I can select where to set up a supply line to. So it might be a good idea to set up a circular supply line so that you have one settler go to one settlement, then another settler from that settlement going to the next settlement, so you have a chain of supply available everywhere. But I do have my uh, supply line set up, it does require a settler, so I'm not going to do that, just that's how you do it, those are the requirements. So now it's very easy for me to start building things in this settlement. And first of all, I want to get some beds down. So I'm going to build a prefabricated structure out of wood. Let's see here. And I'm going to build the the large shack. And as you can see, I have a lot of supplies available because I have all of my settlements linked up. So let's just put the put it wherever. Let's see if I can find a nice spot for it. Yeah, let's just put it on the hill over here. Like so. Yeah, perfect. Then I'm going to put down some beds, and I like to put down a um, fairly big selection of beds to begin with, because I don't want to have to go back and forth and build new beds as settlers come pouring in. So I'm just going to build a bunch of beds here for my settlers to sleep in. And as you can see, the, ha the happiness uh, in my settlement is going down, because people, people don't have their basic needs met at this point. Uh, the settlement has nothing, now it's starting to get some beds here. Five, six, let's build some more, seven, eight, um, ten, eleven, let's see, we can have some beds upstairs as well, twelve, thirteen, uh, let's see if we can get another bed in here. 14, I want 15 beds to begin with, just a bit overkill, but 15 beds. So next up, I'm going to have to give my settler some water, and the water is under resources, water 
Uh, I can't build a water purifier here. The reason why is because it needs to be built in water. The same with the industrial water purifier, it needs to be built in, built in water. So I can only build this water pump, but that's, that's fine, it's, it serves my needs. And it's going to provide me three water. Each resource is enough to cover the needs of a single settler. So that means that now that I have 12, 15, 18, 21 water, that should hold me for a long time. Uh, I also need food, and what you'll notice is that the different food resources produce a different amount of food. So, you want a food resource like the mud fruit plant that produces one unit of food per plant. And the same thing with food, one unit of food is enough to support a single settler. So I'm going to put down a nice number of plants here. And there doesn't seem to be any benefit, as far as I can tell, from having a variety of plants. Food is just food. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. So, just a bunch of food going down here. But the thing is, the food just won't just start appearing. I can't store it in the inventory and the settlers will have food available. So I need to assign, I need to assign a settler to food, the food resource. And the way you assign a settler to do something is the same for all resources, aside from the supply line. You go into the settlement menu, the one I'm already in, then you click E to command that settler, it changes from command to go, then I'm going to send that settler to the mud fruit plant. So now my food starts increasing, and my settler is now producing six food, enough to sustain six settlers. Very nice. So, I only have one settler available here, because the other is off uh, on a supply run. So, I need defense, but I'm just going to hold off on that for a while, because I need also need power. Now, each settler doesn't need... Each settler doesn't need power to... It, it's just different, uh, different, um, different items that require power. So I'm going to put the power generator down here. And one of the things that's quite important, if I go under power... Let's see here. Power, miscellaneous. Then I can build a recruitment radio beacon. And the recruitment radio beacon is going to allow me to... It's going to allow me to get more settlers passively to the settlement. So, the way I get it working, this is the way you get you power all of your different devices. You, you select the power generator or the item, then you click space, and you attach a wire. So the wire doesn't have unlimited range. I couldn't have put the tower over here, and then stretched the wire all the way. In that case, I need pylons, but... Um, I won't bother with that just yet. You'll the pylons. You can go with power here. Power pylon, large, for example. And uh, now I'm out of. I have very little copper left. So uh, I would I would have needed more copper to build my power pylon. But now I have the I have the recruitment radio beacon up and running. So that's fine. I don't need that much power. Now I have uh, food. I have water. I have power. My defense rating is in the red, which isn't good. So I'm going to want to create some defenses for my for my settlers. And there are different kinds. There are uh, guard posts. They produce two defense, but they also bind up a settler, and I don't want that. Then there are power requiring turrets, like these laser turrets. And there are non-power requiring turrets, like the heavy machine gun turrets. Now, I already have a laser turret, it produces 8 defense. So what I'm going to do with the laser turret, uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't really matter where you put it. It's mainly aesthetic. So I'm going to put it down here. But it needs power, so I have enough spare power from my small generator here that I can stretch the wire down to the laser turret. And now I have 8 defense. And it starts shooting at something, that's interesting. Starts shooting at the bug there. So the bug shouldn't be able to do much. Okay, I'll need to actually need to fight a bit here. Oh, it's a legendary blood bug. Wow. Legendary Red Widow. Now I actually need to use a stim pack. I didn't expect that at all. Uh, let's see here. Stim pack. 
Let's just use two stim packs. Going to Vats. And kill the bug. That's why it took a lot of fire, I guess. So, Ghoul Slayer's Gamma Gun. I got a nice... Uh, got a nice anti-ghoul weapon there. A blood bug. Okay, so I almost died. Might as well sleep. Uh, might as well sleep a bit. Instead of using a stim pack. So I've slept. Well rested. So now I can continue to build my defenses. And let's see if I've managed to attract additional settlers in the meantime. Indeed I have. Now I have three people in the settlement. That's good. So I'm going to build heavy machine gun turrets to increase my uh, increase my defensive rating. Let's just put it uh, somewhere else. I don't really know that it matters, but anyway, uh, just for aesthetic purposes, covering different angles. So yeah, let's put it over here. And now I have 16 defense. I won't. Uh, let's see. Let's say I'm going to have 24 defense here. So, the, uh, the settler is going to start working automatically uh, somewhere. So, I, I can I can assign him to something. I can assign him to the food resource. I have enough food, so I'm not going to do anything yet. Now, another thing that's worth noting is that... Uh, now I have covered all the basics. This is, again, this is going to be basic settlement building. So, now my happiness is going up. Uh, my settlement is fairly safe. I have a supply line set up. I have enough beds. I have enough water. I have enough food. I have defense. Now, should I want to get more resources in a certain settlement, I can start scrapping things. And the way I start scrapping things is that you go around looking for things on the ground. You can look for trees, for example. Like this this wire fence, I could scrap that, but I want it there because it looks nice. So the tree cluster, press R to scrap it, gives me 30 wood. And now this wood is available in every single settlement because I have set up a supply line between the settlements. So, scrapping the wood, uh, can scrap the wire fence, but I don't want to do that. So there are different resources, wood and steel. And now I have a healthy settlement that's going to provide me with a base to resupply in, to stash things in. And I can stock all my junk here and have it available all across the map. Very useful to have. And um, that's basically all you need to begin with. Later on, we can look at more advanced settlement building, building where you can have, uh, you can build different kinds of traders, clinics, uh, all that kind of good stuff. But just these basics: getting enough water, food, defense, and a recruitment beacon. That's very important. It's going to allow you to increase your settlements size fairly quickly. So hopefully that was useful. Gave you some pointers for building. Settlements up quickly the supply lines very important. So six charisma I think that should be uh, the minimum charisma value if you intend to build build up your settlements And I think the settlement building is quite fun. You can create pet settlements uh, Create settlements that look good. Th there are some issues as you can see with how how buildings are placed This is like a flying large shack here, but uh, not enough to break the enjoyment of playing uh, this part of the game, which I I've had a lot of fun with just setting up different settlements, making them look good, and watching all of my settlers go around and work. So, hopefully, that was useful. I uh, hope you enjoy settlements as much as I do in Fallout, because it's, it's been a great addition to the game, in my opinion. Strength and honor.